that, watch the gun. Now it doesn't move at all. Doesn't rise, doesn't fall, doesn't bump back. So what I'm trying to get the point across to you guys at is the fact that I don't need to do this. When I shoot the gun out, I don't need to pull it back into me because when I start pulling it back into me, do you think my mental connection is about building structure and elbows in line with the path of recoil and energy that's coming back and reciprocating towards me? Or is it about squeezing the fuck out of a rifle? So when you squeeze a rifle, you're never gonna have consistency. Why? Because muscles do what? They get tired. They, get tired. they, get tired, they fatigue and they're, are they ever gonna be at a consistent flex no. or tension? No. So what I'm looking to do with that third point of contact being the buttstock, it's been defined for years as what? Put the buttstock in the what? Shoulder pocket. Shoulder pocket. Cool. All of you just said the same term. So define for me my shoulder pocket. Uh, okay, are eyes there? Are our eyes there? Tell me when to stop. Oh, now all you're waiting for my fucking eye. Yeah, so it makes sense, right? If I can make sense of it for you, most likely you'll say, oh, yep, yeah, no shit. So what I do and how I teach building a rifle to shoulder connection is I want my hips and shoulders square. And then if, you know, whether it's the man card, whether it's, uh, you know, the dope drill, I shoot the rifle out as I flip the safety off and I put the optic in line with the gun. Has the buttstock touched the body yet? Nope. No. No. But watch, the, watch me, I bring my body up and forward into the gun. Now that really reinforces the structure that I have built behind it and the structure I have built along it. But I bring my body to the gun, I don't pull the gun back into my body. Now this isn't some gingerly bullshit like it just needs to rest there. How much of that buttstock am I consuming? Yeah, not the lower one third, I'm consuming everything. That's why I shrug up and pull in. So I'm taking that medial part of the clavicle, I'm bringing it up, and I drive forward and in to meet the buttstock. That way I have no muscular tension being pulled back into me. Muscular tension pulled back into you is gonna look like this. As I tense up and pull back, all right? Well, you can't see what I see, so let's turn on the laser on this target. <clears throat> Ready? Everyone sees that laser? Muscular tension, muscular tension. You guys see what the laser's doing? Yeah. So that's what I see in my sights. Now let's bring the body to the gun. Optic in line with the eye. That way I have a perfect sight picture that's parallax free in theory. Up, forward. Now watch the difference. Now I got a vertically tracking dancing dot. Now how do I refine it even more? You don't watch it. I'm not gonna watch the reticle. I'm not gonna watch the dot. I'm gonna stare at what? Target. Which is, what's the smallest piece of that target? The blue dot. The blue dot. Stare at that blue dot and you see that the, the dancing of the laser now reduces a ton. Just by staring at one thing, I can even throttle up the aggression and it's never gonna go where? Left or right. Left or right. But as soon as this elbow decides, hey, I'm gonna now present out. You guys see where that laser's naturally wanting to tend to. Yeah. So drive that elbow down and in, that's the, uh, that's the non-dominant side. And obviously with the dominant side, we're not out here, we're all in line. Sound good? All right, that's with the grip, with the rifle. Um, the laser is definitely an awesome visual aid for all of you guys to see what I see within my, my uh, optic. Not saying to go run and fucking buy lasers. If you do, go hit up this guy. But uh, at the same time, but when we are looking at this, if you guys are a teacher, you can use that laser, uh, you know, very easily. Um, uh, Mocha Bear, Kinetic Consulting, uh, John Dufresne said, man, you got a fucking laser. Use that as a visual aid on the visual side of aspects so your students can see that. It was like, oh, dude, why am I not doing it? Instead of looking sweet and cool with hardware, you could actually use it so that you improve their software, which was like ingenious. So give credit where credit's due. That guy was a real help for that aspect. You have anything to add on the grip? Uh, yeah, just with the shoulder pocket guys, right? Like you see guys do it and they get away with it. Some guys, right? Like they've been doing it for a while. Um, but as soon as we start really getting super aggressive, you have a high probability if you get sucked into the dot to watch it to try to compensate for that right and really roll into it hard and then if we start rolling with our shoulder pocket and pushing into the gun it's going to keep making it even more inconsistent right and now we're chasing some random unpredictable dot that we can't adjust on the fly right so just because you can get away with it it doesn't make it the best way right there's a better way to do it and putting a good solid structure that doesn't melt right here where your clavicle is, right? Like it doesn't change. And building to it and reducing all the recoil in the front will save you a ton of heartache. Even if you start to get stressed out and you start making little mistakes, it won't fully fucking collapse. But as soon as it goes to the shoulder pocket, dude, I know it, I've done it, right? You end up driving in like, oh fuck, this dot's 
fucking running high, right? And I'll roll into it. And then what happens? You start pushing really low. That doesn't happen if I have a good solid base behind it, right? Because I way less movement right here than in that pocket. 